In the last video, we created our workflow and need to associate it with a provisioning policy. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's click Associate this workflow with a provisioning policy, and we're going to search for the provisioning policy that was created when we created the service for this particular service. And there it is right there, the default provisioning policy for CSV file writer. So I'm going to click on that service where it gives me the opportunity to make some changes. And a provisioning policy, there's a number of different pieces to it. The general piece, which defines what the policy is and gives us a little bit of detail about it. The membership, who gets access to this policy. And the one we're concerned with now, which is the entitlements. In an entitlement section, there can be one or more services that are granted, and each one of those services may have a workflow associated with them. So in this case, we only have one entitlement. We're only giving you the custom CSV service. So let's click on that custom CSV service and see what is going on. As you can see, there is the default account request workflow associated with that. We want to change that to our new workflow. And our new workflow is specific to the CSV file writer service. So we're going to click search and we see there's our manager and IT approval and we'll select OK. And we're going to select OK again since we see that it's associated and now we'll have the opportunity to review the entire policy and submit that policy to the system so that it will become active. Now if you remember our workflow we added a second approver so at the very beginning two people need to approve this request. After those two people approve the request it will go on to the IT person to fill in the first, second, and third parameters and then off to the owner for an approval. So we're going to have to show you a number of different screens here to get through this. So first let's get this provisioning policy in place. So we're going to tell this provisioning policy to take place immediately and we're going to submit it into the system. We're going to go up and manage our users and we're going to find a user that we would like to give access to this service. Now, this person could use the self-service interface to find and request the service. Another person could use either the self-service interface or this console uh, to request the service. But for sake of simplicity, we're going to request it right now. Barbara Cash is the person that we want to request this service for. And so we're going to go and request an account for Barbara Cash. Her boss happens to be Bill Goldman, if you saw that second name there. So what service are we going to give Barbara? Let's just do a search and we'll find the services that are available to her. And there is the custom CSV service that we want to give to her. We'll click on continue. And we can see here are the parameters for that account. If we were actually asking IT for the parameter 1, 2, and 3, we might block these so that the user can't fill them in. Or we may allow them to pick them, but then the IT person can override that. In this case, we've left them available, but we're not going to fill them in. We're going to let the IT person fill them in, and we're going to submit the request now. As soon as our request is submitted, it's going to start the workflow. And that workflow is going to continue through and ask for the first two people to approve. It just so happens that that additional approver that we created uh, will actually go to Barbara Cash because of the way we defined it. So let's take a look here real quick and we're going to see what's going on. We're going to expand this uh, request and we'll see that it is pending in the approval process uh, for the manager and the additional approver. We can see that the manager approval is going to Bill Goldman and that the additional approver, which I'll highlight, is going to Barbara Cash. So let's log into the self-service interface. I happen to have it open on another tab. First, let's log in as Barbara Cash. And Barbara is going to log in and she'll see that she has this additional approver, which was the name of that node, request. So it says, Barbara, do you want to approve this request? 
I don't know that that really makes sense, but for sake of simplicity, we'll just agree that it does. We'll say approve, and she can say I approve, or any other comment, and this will get logged as part of the approval process for this particular request. Barbara's done now, so let's log in as Bill Goldman, her manager, because he also has to approve. Now remember, if Bill Goldman had said reject at this point, this entire process would be rejected and there would be no further actions. Or if Barbara had said, no, I reject this, it would say, I'm, uh, it's done, and this request wouldn't even be here for Bill Goldman. Um, but both of them have to say yes before it moves on to the IT approver. So let's just, for simplicity, say that Bill approves this, and now it's going to go on and be waiting for the IT approver. Let's log off Bill here, and now we're going to go back over and look at this request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just close and refresh this. And as I refresh this here, we're going to expand each of these pieces, and we're going to see that both Bill and Barbara have uh, approved it. So there's the manager approver by Bill, there's the additional approver by Barbara, and now we're waiting on this IT person for information. And remember, it went to multiple owners, and those owners are all of the members of that organizational role of IT uh, approvers. So let's go back and log in as one of the IT approvers. And one of the IT approvers is Dan Myers, and we will log in as him. And Dan should have a request that says, ask IT for information. Let's be Dan and supply that information. Now, here's some details, the instruction details. You've been requested to submit information on this request. Let's provide that information. Now we're going to provide the information for parameters 1, 2, and 3. So we can say this is, uh, you know, home... Uh, directory, we could put in whatever parameters actually make sense for this particular service. And we'll say OK. He's provided his information and now Dan is done with this particular request. So we're going to log off Dan and we'll go back to the other console. On this console, as you can see, we were waiting for the IT for information. I'm going to have to close this and refresh this. Um, the simple fact is they usually don't happen this fast, so we usually look at the requests as we need them. But this is a great way to troubleshoot, so we're going to expand the account add, the approval process, the entitlement process, and we now see the manager is approved, that additional approver has approved, IT has provided information, and now the service owner needs to approve. And that service owner happens to be James Smith. So let's log in as James Smith. We go back to the self-service console. We log in as Jay Smith. And we put in his password. And we log in. And Jay Smith is going to be asked as the service owner to approve. And we can see he's got other things to do as well, but we won't worry about those at this point. And we can see that he has this request. We can see the details, and we can modify these as you saw in the nodes and now we will go ahead and approve this request and say I approve obviously we would like them to put more than just I approve and we'll select OK. Now every bit of that workflow should be complete so Barbara should have this service. So let's see what's going on here with this complete service. Well simplest way is do a close and now what we'll do is we'll do a refresh down here to see if this service has gone from pending to being complete. It is now successful. So let's go back to Manage Users. Click on Manage Users. And we're going to open up Barbara's uh, accounts. So we see there's Barbara. We'll highlight over here on the twisty. Go down to Accounts. And now we should see that Barbara has all of her previous accounts plus, notice at the bottom here, the custom service CSV. 
So we had to go through that entire process uh, to, to get that service. If at any point of t at time during that process something would have been rejected, she would not have gotten the service and the, the request would have looked like the one I'm going back to the view all requests because I previously tested this and you can see there the rejected account add there for Barbara at the bottom. So that's what a rejected account would look like and if we open it up we can see the re reasons it was rejected whether it timed out and nobody approved it or whether somebody said no I do not approve this. So there you go in a very simple way uh, you can see how it, how easy it is to create workflows uh, for any of our provisioning policies within Identity Manager.